Hi, everybody. I think we are live. Welcome, welcome to my cooking class today. If you can hear me and see me okay, just a, leave me a little comment and then we will proceed. We always have to make sure things are working in these live videos. All right. Um, feel free to leave a comment, say hi, say where you're from if you like. It's always fun to see where people are from. Okay. I have posted the recipe links in this live video post that I just started. So if you want to follow along with the recipes, you can click on those links. Hi, Debbie from Iowa. Hi, Joy. All right, people are coming in. Nectaria, that's an exotic name. Hello. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Susie. I'm looking at my comments here on my laptop, which is sitting on top of my cat tree, which works really well. So that's what I'm doing over here to the side. Hey, Daryl. Hey, Maxine. Hey, Christy. All right. So if you guys would like to follow along with the recipes, I'm making four recipes today. Uh, burrito bowl, salsa, guacamole, and corn chips, which all kind of go together. You can click on the link that I gave you, the corn chips, recipe is in the cookbook, which is on page 143. This is my cookbook, Straight Up Food. If you have this, you can follow along in here. All these recipes are in this cookbook, and three of them are on my website, straightupfood.com, if you want to follow along there. And let's see, the burrito bowl is on page 53 of the cookbook. The guacamole is on 162 and the salsa's on 153, and I will repeat those as we are doing them, as we get closer. Hi, Lily. Hi, Linda. <laughs> Linda says her four kitties love their cat trees. I probably have at least four cat trees, and I have two cats. Um, hi, Tammy from Hot Texas. Yeah, it's been disgustingly hot here in California and it's just letting up this week. I'm so happy. All right. Hi, Krista. I love your recipes. Thank you so much. If you guys have the cookbook already, you've used it, uh, please leave a response or a review of any length on amazon.com if you have an account there. Actually, you don't even have to have an account there. Um, that really helps me out. So as I said, all four recipes that I'm going to be making today are in my cookbook. And if you're not familiar with my cookbook, because I know we get new people every week and a lot of uh, regular followers. So thank you guys for following me. I just hit 50,000 followers on my Facebook, which is a big deal. So thank you so much for your support and for following me and for getting the cookbook. And if you don't have the cookbook, it's a really nice cookbook. I wanted it to be pretty as well as practical and very friendly and easy to use. So of course it lays flat. It's got lots of pictures. It's got nearly a hundred recipes that are all 100% plant foods, no added salt, oil, or sugar, which doesn't mean that the food won't taste good. It just means that I have um, figured out other ways to bring flavor and richness and sweetness and it's all possible. I've been eating a plant-based diet for about 20 years and I love it. I would never go back. I feel so good and it's totally worth it. And all the recipes that I make, I always tell people that you can tweak them to make them taste more like you want. So if you're a hot and spicy lover, you can make them hot and spicy. If I'm using an ingredient like corn or something and you don't like corn, leave it out. It's usually just totally easy and fine. So let me put the book back here. If you have any questions about these recipes, the book, whatever, plant-based eating in general, you can um, ask me in the comments. I also have a moderator helping me out today. 
So, and every day, every time I do this. So feel free to put your comments there. Hi, Lisa from True North. True North Health Center is normally where I would be teaching on Tuesdays, but since we are sheltering in place, I've been teaching live for the last two plus months, and it's been really fun, but I miss, I miss seeing True North and seeing all my people there. Um, hi, Lindsay. Hi, Helene. Hi, Darren. Hi, Aunt Kathy. Um, thanks for saying hi, Darren. Hi, Krista. Hi, Janet. Two Kristas, different spellings. Um, hi, Lily. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. And what I do is I get going and then I check the comments just to make sure I don't get too behind on answering your questions. So feel free to ask anything you like. And after this video is done today, if you have to cut out early or something, it will be on my um, Facebook page as well as my YouTube channel. And if you haven't subscribed or followed my YouTube channel, please go there. Just search straightupfood.com. And I will get rid of this text here. Okay. All right. So I'm going to start with the burrito bowl today. And the burrito bowl is basically a taco salad or another way I explain it is everything that would go into a vegan burrito but without the tortilla. Lots of people are cutting out tortillas, especially flour tortillas because they are made with white flour, refined white flour, um, oil usually, lots of salt and lots of other preservatives and just weird stuff. So flour tortillas are a lot more complicated than corn tortillas which I do eat some corn tortillas and I'll make corn chips a little bit later. Uh, but corn chips can be found with just four ingredients. They're really um, more minimally processed. So without the uh, flour tortilla, we're just gonna put everything in a bowl. And this is what I call an entree salad. So you could just eat this as a meal in itself because it's got beans and corn and cabbage and hearty stuff in it that will fill you up. All right. So I'm not going to be doing any cooking today. This is just really easy and that's what I like. I like easy. My recipes are not complicated. Uh, okay. So I'm just going to move this to the side and you want to get a big bowl to start with. Okay. And I'm going to go a little, well, let's see. I should go in order of the recipe. So first at the top of the burrito bowl recipe is the rice. So this is another ingredient that really makes this a nice hearty recipe that's going to fill you up. This is long grain brown rice. You could use any kind of rice you want, uh, but I tend to do long grain, short grain brown rices most often. And I tend to do the long grain for this recipe because the short grain is, is more sticky. It sticks together. And it's not as ideal for this salad because it clumps. But if you only had short grain, you could use that. You could use wild rice. doesn't really matter. So this is cooked long grain brown rice. One cup rice to two cups of water. I cooked it for 50 minutes. Bring it to a boil. Turn it down to simmer. Cover it. Cook it for 50 minutes. And that's step one on the recipe. And then after 50 minutes, leave the lid on. Move it off the heat and just give it 10 minutes to kind of finish coming together. Okay. And someone asked me last week, I think, um, what if I already have cooked rice? How much do I use? And rice triples. So if it calls for one cup dry, it's going to make three cups cooked. Okay. So we've got our rice. What is next on our list? We're going to put in some romaine lettuce. This is four cups of romaine lettuce that's just cut kind of thinly like a taco salad lettuce would be. So that's about four cups. Again, if you didn't have romaine, you could use butter lettuce or chopped spinach or something, but romaine is kind of more taco salad-y. And then this is one can of black beans drained and rinsed. People will often ask me, do I have to drain and rinse my beans? I always do if I get them from a can. This is the brand that I used, Westbury Natural 
no salt added black beans. So these are cooked. And I always drain and rinse my beans, especially if they're going into a salad like this. You don't want that water that comes with the beans. Um, if you were making a soup or a stew or something like that, and you want to just leave the bean water in, you could do that, but not for a salad like this. So down here it says no salt added. It's, it's much easier nowadays. I live in California, maybe it's a little different, but to find canned foods that don't have salt added. This is one of my favorite brands. They make other things besides beans, uh, Westbury Natural. They make my favorite mustard that doesn't have salt in it. So you could check that out if you're looking for a no salt mustard. All right, what is next on our list? Doo -doo -doo. We have some cabbage. This is one cup of kind of thinly sliced green cabbage. If you only had red cabbage, you could use that too, or you could use a combo of both. This is one cup of cherry tomatoes that I've cut in half. If you only had big tomatoes, you can chop those up too. And then this is one cup of organic yellow corn that was frozen and I just thawed it out. If you have corn from your garden or that you got at the farmer's market or wherever and you wanna use that, you totally can and you don't even have to cook it. Raw corn is delicious and totally doable. If you do cut corn on the, if you have a corn on the cob and you want to cut the kernels off, you just get a bowl that has some high sides like this, and then you hold the kernel by the end so it's kind of sticking down like this, and then you just cut the kernels off. Okay. And then we're going to, now you, I'm going to put in some red onion. This is about a half cup of red onion, chopped kind of small. If you only had white or you only had yellow or if you only had green onions, also known as scallions, you could use those as well. But I think the, the purple is pretty, so I usually use purple. And then as far as herbs in this, you can use cilantro, which would probably be most traditional for a taco salad. I know there's a lot of uh, cilantro ejectors out there, so you could use parsley. You could use basil whatever floats your boat. Uh, I am using cilantro today and I've just coarsely ch uh, cut these cilantro leaves. So this is fresh cilantro. And then the next thing on the list is avocado. Now, if you want to add it, because there's no fat in the dressing, there's no added fat really here. If you want to add a half or a whole avocado to this, just cut in little squares, you could do that or add it as you're eating it. I'm not gonna add it today because I'm making guacamole later, so we'll put some of that on top. And so the last ingredient here is three tablespoons, no, that's another recipe, one third cup of lime juice. And this salad has so much going on with it, so much goodness and flavor already. I didn't wanna put like a heavy, flavor bomb dressing on this. I wanted to just keep the dressing very simple. And so it's just lime juice, which is very traditionally used in Mexican food. So we're gonna put the lime juice on. If you want more or less, feel free to change that up to your liking. If you do have a favorite salad dressing that you'd like to put on instead of the lime juice, go right on ahead. It's all flexible. This is a great salad to bring to uh, potlucks or events where you, you know, you've been asked to bring a dish. Did I get everything in there? I think I did. Um, sometimes instead of the tomatoes, I'll use red bell pepper. Or you could use an orange or a yellow bell pepper, but it's nice to have the, the red pop in there, red something. But since it's summer and the tomatoes are really good right now, I'm using tomatoes. Um, I think all the tomatoes are hiding at the bottom. And this makes a lot of food too. So this would be a great dish to make at the beginning of the week and just eat throughout the week or the next three or four days. Um, and as I said, if you're going to do that and you want the avocado, I would just leave the avocado off and put it on as you eat it. The avocado is a higher calorie 
plant foods. So if you're trying to lose weight or watch your calories, you could just leave the avocado off. Um, and also, as I'm looking at this, I'm thinking of all the things I usually say about this salad. If you didn't have black beans, you could use pinto beans. You could use um, cannellini beans or garbanzo beans. But again, a black or a pinto bean is going to be most traditional for a taco salad. All right. So once you've got it blended up, you can taste it and see if you need to add more lime juice. Uh, what would you guys add to this that I haven't added? Maybe you could leave a comment. I know some people like jalapenos, fresh jalapenos sliced up. Now, if I was bringing this to a group where I didn't know that everybody liked hot and spicy food, I might not do the jalapenos. Um, but you could put some grated carrots, some sliced uh, celery, whatever you want. Okay. And then I would definitely put this in a cuter bowl or dish if you are taking this somewhere because presentation matters. Okay. If you guys don't normally follow me on Facebook, you guys probably all do, but I often put pictures of what I made for my lunch and dinner on my Facebook. So if you want more ideas, just go there and check, go to photos and you can see tons of pictures because some people, when they're just starting out, they need a visual, like, well, what does your plate look like every day? So you can go there and find lots of pictures of how I put meals together when I'm not using recipes, when I am using recipes. Um, okay. So there we go. Isn't that pretty? Or if you're bringing this somewhere, you could put the avocado on top, like a nice little garnish. Okay. There we go. You have to have balance. Doesn't that look nice? Don't you want to just eat that right now? All right, let me check in with you guys to see if you have any questions. Um, okay. Let's see. Black olives. Yes, I love olives. Olives are full of salt, so I typically don't use them in my recipes because I'm an SOS free chef, salt, oil, sugar free. Green onions, definitely. Pickled red, red onions, again, delish, have a lot of salt. Red bell pepper, yeah. Hi, Mari. Hi, Mary Beth. Alternative for corn, you can just leave the corn out or put another can of beans in, maybe like a can of pinto and a can of black if you like, whatever you want. This is a very flexible recipe. Yeah, totally use basil or parsley if you can't do cilantro. What kind, Tina asks, what kind of grinder do you use to grind the sumac spices that you recommended? I, um, it just says my video is interrupted, so hopefully that will come back. Uh, I buy my sumac already ground, so I've never, um, I've never had to grind it myself. Uh, okay. Yeah, just buy it. Go if I mean, where I get it is Savory Spice. So search on Google Savory Spice sumac, and you'll find it already ground up. Um, are there? Dana asks, are those Tupperware bowls? My wrists are needing some lighter in weight. That white bowl, I don't think it's a Tupperware bowl. It does not say on the bottom. This is one of those bowls that came with a, um, one of those rocking cutter knives. And I, I didn't like, I didn't like it. So I kept the bowl and I don't really use the knife. But you could get some Tupperware bowls, certainly. Um, hi, Tammy. Uh, thank you. I'm so glad that you're appreciating these live demos. They are so much fun for me to do. Okay. Hi, Peggy. Hi, Terry. I made the peach berry. Oh, last week we made the peach blackberry cobbler, and Brenda says that she made it. Love your recipes in your book. Thank you so much. Hi, Lisa. 
Okay. I think I made it through the comments there. Yeah. Um, the video said it was buffering, but I think it's fine now. So if it's fine now, just let me know. Um, it seems to be fine. It just had a little, a little bloop there. You're back. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, that's never happened before. I'm plugged into my, uh, Ethernet cord, so I don't know why that happened. Live video, you never know what's going to happen. There's a cat right here. I can't keep her out. Hopefully she doesn't jump on the counter, although that would be cute. Okay, so I'm just going to set this aside while we move on to the next to the next thing. And maybe, maybe I'll move this back here and I'll bring it back out later so we can have one last look. Okay, so now we're going to work on the corn chips. I'm going to get my baking sheet here and I'm going to turn the oven on so you can cook your corn chips um, different ways. It doesn't really matter what the temperature is. I think in the book it says one, uh, 375. What I usually do is just put it under the broiler on low and then it takes like 10 minutes ish. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my broiler on low and I'm going to take my rack out. I'll put that over here. Okay. So making oil-free corn chips is the easiest thing ever. And these are the uh, corn tortillas that I'm using. So you want to start with a six inch corn tortilla. And this is Mi Rancho. Oh, I forgot. I got to do it this way. Mi Rancho brand. And um, this doesn't have, can you see this ingredient list right here? It's very short and that's what you want. If you're looking at corn tortillas and the ingredient list look like this, small print and really long, you don't want that. So look for corn tortillas that are similar to this. Ingredients are water, organic whole white corn, organic yellow corn, masa flour, contains less than 2% of organic guar gum and lime. All right, so I'm going to do about three of these, I think. No, I'll do two. Nobody's here to eat these with me, so I'm just going to do two and I'll eat them later. So what you do is I double them up like this and then just cut them like a pizza. And you can cut them in any shape you want, but Often in eating this way, we've come from standard American diet and it helps us, it helps when we serve other people, that things look like what we're used to eating. So this is the shape of your traditional corn chip. So that's what we're going for. And then just put, a, put them on your, your pan. You don't need any parchment paper or anything. And then just kind of spread them out. Whoop, that one didn't get cut all the way. Okay, so just spread them out so they're not touching, so they're not overlapping. Okay, so I'm going to put these in. And I'm going to set the timer for about 10 minutes, and then I will check those. And when we're cooking the corn chips, there's a little bit of a learning curve, so you don't want them too soft, you know, so they're bendable because then you can't pick up salsa and guacamole with them and, and then they don't crunch and we don't want them too hard where they are starting to brown because they continue to harden as they cool. So it will be like biting in the glass that they'll be too hard. So just you kind of keep your eye on it toward the end, you know, take one out, test it out. Okay, so we'll come back to those in a sec. And did you guys have any questions about that very difficult recipe, which isn't even really a recipe? Um, the temperature on the chips, I think it's 375 in the book. I just put it on low broil. Um, I do it different ways. Uh, the recipe for the corn chips is in the cookbook on page 143. Uh, Krista says, food for life has some sprouted corn tortillas, same brand. Yeah, totally. But read that label. 
and just make sure you're getting the good kind that are organic and don't have a lot of junk in them. Okay. Um, all right. Yay, I'm back. Um, uh, the, the corn tortillas again are called Mi Rancho. Um, okay, but when you're looking for tortillas where you live, I, I think that you can get like local tortillas as well. Uh, and you can look in the frozen or the refrigerated section for the ones that have the least amount of preservatives in it. Uh, these actually aren't in the refrigerated section and they don't have a lot of preservatives, um, but they do have a use by date. So they shouldn't be kept in your pantry for very long. All right. So now let's do the guacamole. So this is another super easy recipe. Um, I've already started my avocado here, but I did want to show you, we're just going to put everything into this um, pasta dish and mash it up. You can use a bowl, but I kind of like um, a plate like this because you can smash easier. If it's, if it's a bowl, then um, someone's calling me, turn that off. If it's a bowl, it's hard to get flat. It doesn't really matter. Just use what you have. You'll see how I do it in here. Um, okay, so um, this these were pretty big avocados, so I used two instead of three. And I just take the pit out with the uh, tip of my knife there. Some people will go and then they'll turn it, whatever works for you. Once the pit is out, I just cut it into squares while it's still in the skin. And you don't ever want to cut an avocado while you're holding it like this because the knife could go through. So always put it on the cutting board just in case. Okay. And then with the soup spoon, just take it out. Oh, there we go. Um, so we're going to now transfer the avocado into this pasta plate. Another part of our peeling. Okay. Now you can mix them all together. You could get the avocado mashed up first if you like. I think what I'm going to do is put the three tablespoons of lime juice in here with the half teaspoon of ground cumin. Now I know there's some people out there that just don't like cumin. You can use something else. You can leave it out. There is one small um, garlic minced chopped finely. And I'm going to go ahead and mash all this stuff before I add that other stuff, um, just so I can help it along first. These avocados weren't really, really ripe, but they are mashing just fine here. If you didn't have lime juice, you could use lemon juice, but lime juice is very, I'm using lime juice in most all my recipes today, three out of four. It's used a lot in Mexican cooking. Now I'm using a fork. You could also, sometimes I use this bean masher. That could work too. Um, this is different than a potato masher. See how small the holes are. So this is great if you're doing like a bean dip or something. My cat keeps walking in front of me, looking at me like, who are you talking to? Why aren't you talking to me? All right. Yummy. All right, so now we're going to add in the remainder of the stuff. So what did I use for guacamole today? I'm using basil since I use cilantro already. So 
This is a half cup of chopped fresh basil. Again, you could use whatever you have, parsley, cilantro, oregano, that would be good. And then about a half cup of finely chopped onion. This is a white onion. You can use a yellow onion, a red onion, whatever you've got. Now, some people add tomatoes in with their guacamole, and you can certainly do that if you want. I'm not going to because I'm going to be making salsa, but if you do want to add tomatoes, just chop them kind of small. Oh, this looks good. Um, what do, you, what do you guys add to your guacamole that I haven't put in here? I might put some black pepper in. Hmm, what else would I put in here? Some people put, instead of all avocado, they'll do a portion of cooked green peas. So it'll still look like guacamole, but it won't have as much um, fat in it from just being pure avocado. So you could do that. Okay, I think we're mashed enough there. Now I always put this in a cuter dish. Try not to make a mess. Now there's, there's a ton of ways to keep your avocado from turning brown. If you have a great idea, put it in the comments. Uh, but what I usually do with something like this that's kind of smushy is I'll put a piece of saran wrap over it and just press the saran wrap to the top of the avocado so the air can't get in there and that tends to work. So there we go. Doesn't that look good? Mm. Yum, yum. Having some avocado made up in the fridge already or some salsa or even a salad that's already made is so helpful throughout the week when you wanna put a meal together. So you don't have to start from scratch every time. And this is so rich and delicious. You just need like a, like a spoonful on top of your salad. So we will come back to this a little later and I'll get my salsa stuff ready. Check the comments here. Needs jalapeno. Yeah, feel free to add it. Lime, garlic, onion, and my guac. Herbs would be great though. Yeah, if you didn't have herbs on hand, make it anyway. It'd still be really good. Um, spring onions, ground pepper. Yes, yes, yes. Basil and guacamole is pretty good. Basil and everything is really good. Okay, now let me just take a little check on my chips. They only have 19 seconds left. And then just, those look done. So I had that in for almost 10 minutes. So if I was you, if you had like a low broil, I would do it Maybe do it for eight minutes and then check it. So I'm just going to let those cool for a minute and we'll come back to those, but they definitely look done. Okay. So we are going to use our food processor for the salsa. I'm going to move this over. Now, if you don't have a food processor, you can just chop everything small and mix it in a bowl. No worries whatsoever. This is just a basic fresh tomato salsa. And let me look at my recipe. So first of all, we're gonna start with two and a half cups of tomatoes. Now when I make salsa, I take the seeds out. You can see how the seeds are out of there. If you wanna leave the seeds in, you can, if you don't wanna waste them, or you can save them and use them as a base for a salad dressing, which works really well. Um, but if you don't take the seeds out, it gets really watery. So you can take them out like I did, or you can leave them in 
And if you don't like the watery result, you can just drain some of the water off later. So this is two and a half cups of tomatoes. You can use aroma, you can use any kind really. Uh, the skin is on, I've just taken the seeds out of the center. And then again, I'm using basil. And all of this is going into the food processor, so it's gonna get chopped, but I just chopped it here so I could measure it. So this is about, I believe, uh, a half cup of chopped herbs. Again, your choice, I'm using basil today. And then one cup of chopped onion of your choice, red, yellow, white. So we are going to put all this in the food processor. This is a 14 cup Cuisinart food processor with the S blade. So we've got the tomatoes, the onion, the basil, lime juice, and garlic. So this is two tablespoons of lime juice, again, with the lime juice. And again, if you don't have lime, use lemon. And then this is one uh, clove garlic that's chopped. Now, even though I'm using the food processor, I like to pre-chop my garlic because sometimes it, I mean, we're not going to be processing this for very long. So I didn't want to take the chance that there might be a big chunk of garlic in there, so I pre-chopped it. Um, I brought out two of my garlic tools just to show you. Uh, I should have just used them and show you how I did it, but I thought of this after the fact. So if you have a garlic clove, you can just put it right in this plastic sleeve and then you roll it and then you shake it out and the little annoying paper that's on the outside of the garlic will come off more easily. And then at that point, if you have a bunch of garlic to chop, you can use this little uh, garlic chopping tool, which is a Tupperware product, it has this little blade in it, and it does a great, great job. This is on my store. If you go to uh, straightupfood.com, you can find this product on there. So you just put all your garlic cloves in there. Chopping garlic is my least favorite kitchen activity. So I love this. And then you just pull on this. The more that you pull, the more finely it gets chopped. So you can buy pre-chopped garlic at the store, but it's often in oil. Or you can buy those pre-chopped bulbs that haven't been, um, not pre-chopped, uh, peeled bulbs of garlic or cloves of garlic. But I don't like my garlic cloves sitting around peeled. Uh, they just smell funny to me. So I like to do it as I go. All right. And so that's everything in the recipe that's in here. And you can just go with that. Oh, and the garlic. Again, if you don't like garlic, leave it out. It will still taste great. But garlic is very traditional for salsa like this. I wonder if I can just er, 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 move this all the way over. Yay. Hopefully that's in focus for you. Now, if you want, you can add a little bit of uh, chili powder to that. So. I've been doing that more lately. This is about uh, one teaspoon. If you like things hot and spicy, you can add chipotle or hot and spicy chili powder. It's up to you. Or your beloved jalapenos. They also make dried jalapenos, which I have used in cornbread before. That's really good. So we're just going to process this. I mean, it's up to you, the texture that you want, if you want it finer or you want it chunkier. So I usually just kind of pulse it until it looks good to me. So. If you want to scrape it down partway through, ooh, that looks good. You can do that. I think I want to go a little bit more. Ooh, perfection. All right, let me move this back. Take your S blade out. Put it into your cute bowl. Some people add mango to their, to their salsa. What do you guys add that's good? 
fennel, fresh fennel might be good. Corn. But this is just your basic salsa. Doesn't that look good? Mmm. Alrighty. So let's bring it all together here. Let me check the comments. Oh, uh, Lena uses a microplane for her garlic. Yeah, you can do that too. I use this uh, microplane mostly for my nutmeg in the morning, for my oatmeal. You can use it to zest citrus. Uh, you can use it for garlic. You just got to be careful you don't grate your fingers. Oh, yeah, pineapple. That would be great. Apple. Let's see. Okay, how much tomato? Two and a half cups chopped tomato. Okay, me tell them. All righty. Oh, the chips. Let me get the chips. Can you hear them? They're definitely crispy. I didn't need that big of a bowl for my chips, but there they are. So you can, you can hear that. These are totally crispy. They, they started to brown a little bit. I think if they're starting to brown, they're probably like take them out immediately. Ideally, you don't want them to brown because that means they, they're a little getting to that too hard end, but see, really crispy. And you won't miss the oil at all. If you are dipping them into stuff like this, let me test this for you. You don't need oil. You don't need salt on them because you have this goodness right here. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. So good. So if I were to eat this salad, I would plate some, which I suppose I could do. I'll just do it right here. That's a big scoop, but uh, I'd put a scoop of guacamole. It's just kind of blends in there. Scoop of the salsa, yummy. Another thing I like to do with this combo um, is put this in steamed corn tortillas or tostadas, and then just put a little bit of this on top instead of doing the chips. All right. Ooh, cranberry salsa. I have a great recipe in the cookbook for a cranberry. I call it a relish. It's so good. It uses persimmons and apples and fresh cranberries, and you just make it in the food processor. It's really easy. Um, okay, I think that's about it. If you guys think of any more questions about this recipe, feel free to leave them there, comment. I'll look at all those later. And I do go back through and answer questions, even though I've answered them here because people look at them later on my Facebook page. So I just want them to see the answers as well. So come back next Tuesday at 10, I will be making fruity baked oatmeal, which is my answer for people who don't like making breakfast, eating breakfast. They just want it super easy. So I'll show you how to do that. And then also I'll be making non-dairy milk from scratch, which is delicious. And lastly, if you liked what you saw today, Check out the Straight Up Food Cookbook. It's on Amazon. It's on my website if you don't shop on Amazon. And it's in digital format as well and all the regular places. So I think that's about it. All right, you guys. We did great on time, 45 minutes. Thank you so much for coming by and hanging out with me. And I will see you next week. All right. Thank you.